Hello guys, we're gonna get intellectual today. So we've done a few videos in the past on Jin Yong, aka Lois Cha, the guy who wrote those Chinese epic fantasy novels that had a lot of great life lessons, a lot of great red pills. Today, one of my favorite historian philosophers that I listen to on a constant basis, Lao Liang, he did a very candid talk about life applied to certain Jin Yong characters in Jin Yong novels. So I wanted to bring it to you, break it down, provide some analysis. He's not completely correct, but he does say some good things. The first part of it, the co-host asks him why Jin Yong, who's such a good writer, who seems to understand humanity so well, why couldn't Jin Yong get with this actress named Xia Meng? So I'm not familiar with Xia Meng, but Xia Meng is apparently a very famous actress from back in the day, 60s, etc. And Jin Yong back then wasn't as famous a writer as he is celebrated now. So, why couldn't the struggling writer get with this famous actress? Because it's really funny because he's speaking so candidly. Probably in the West, you wouldn't be allowed to talk this candidly, but basically what Lao Liang is talking about, your sexual marketplace value. What is a woman's sexual marketplace value? It's the looks, it's the fertility, etc. That in a man is resources, is attitude, and it's often discounted, but his looks too, right? Women can sense a man's health and a man's genetic fitness too. So resources, your attitude to how well you can use those resources and obtain more resources. That's what attitude basically is a signal for. And then to a certain less extent, your looks too. I love how red pill he's being. He's just like, look, to all the men who are always complaining about hypergamous women, etc. Let's flip it around. Would you marry or get with a girl who loves you, but she isn't pretty. She doesn't have the tits and the ass. A lot of you know the Chinese teacher Sherry that's been on my channels. She reminded me something because I needed help translating some of this stuff. Lao Yang likes to use a lot of big words. And Sherry mentioned, so think of this in the context of a more conservative patriarchal society. Most women, 50s, 40s, 60s, Hong Kong, Taiwan, that's where Lois Chow was. He wasn't in mainland China. He was in sort of a more traditional, non-culture destroyed part of China. So like Hong Kong, Taiwan. In those societies, women had maybe one chance to marry. It's not like the West now where a woman can divorce, remarry three or four times, etc. Even though if you look at the author Jing Yong, he was married like three or four times. So that's another story for another time. The point is, if you look at Jing Yong and the era he lived in, the culture, sort of the beliefs, the patriarchy, etc., women had maybe one chance to get it right. So you kind of have to remind yourself of that because I'm looking at it from now, whereas a woman, you just keep monkey branching. That wasn't the case and how Lao Liang is explaining sort of Jing Yong's era, or even modern China monkey branching is not as accepted as it is in the West. So just keep that in mind. The next part our philosopher, historian, literature guy talks about, Zhang Wuji, who's part of this novel called Yi Tian Tu Long Ji, the heavenly sword and dragon saber or something like that, heavenly sword, dragon slaying saber. So the first part we've talked about, the legend of the condor heroes, and then the return of the condor heroes, and I guess this would be the third one then. The main character in it, Zhang Wuji, kind of by luck, by chance, etc., gets a lot of great powers. There's at least four women, there might be more, but there's at least four women that I know of that like him. A lot of people don't like him because of who he picked at the end. Because he had to pick one girl, and a lot of people think maybe he didn't pick the right girl. So that's what they're talking about now, just to give a little context to what the novel is. So let's see what they say. Many so two things to mention about Jin Yong, the author. Louis Cha, aka Jin Yong, was not very successful 
in his romantic endeavors. When you look at the female characters he writes in all his famous novels, you have to keep that in mind. A lot of times he's almost creating a fantasy. And we've explored that in the past in some of our breakdowns of his novels. Sometimes he's creating fantasies in his novels. Other times what he's doing is he's showing the process of a person fantasizing and then getting over. You have to know Lewis's romantic history and know how he dealt with it and how he failed to deal with sort of the red pills of life to see how he writes his characters. Zhang Wuzi, unlike the previous two novels in this trilogy, Zhang Wuzi I think is a more human person. If you look at Guo Jing from the first novel and you look at Yang Guo from the second novel, they definitely have way more strengths than they have flaws. Whereas I think Zhang Wuzi has equal strengths and flaws. And I think that's why some people are mad at Zhang Wuzi because he's a little bit more human, which is less heroic. I don't want people who haven't read the book or seen all the hundreds of adaptations. Seriously, China adapts this novel once every two or three years. I don't want people to think that Zhang Wuzi is just a bad character. In fact, he might be a better character to represent the common man. Very few men are super decisive, are super whatever word you use, alpha about everything, you know, society, etc. casts a lot of doubts on you. So I just want to make that clear. What you'll see in the next section when Lao Liang gets really, really honest about what Junior said about his characters, especially the female characters, is that I think Zhao Ming and Zhou Zizhuo, the two more cunning lovers of Zhang Wuzi, are actually kind of more the type of person that Jin Yong went for. He liked the more cunning, smart women, but the problem is cunning, smart women usually don't like simple, kind of nice guys. So I think you have to keep that in mind, but let's keep watching. Jin Yong has a few words. How do you say it? I think if you're a woman, you hear that word, you'll feel very sad. Listen. Jin Yong said this. He said, Woman, don't be too smart. If you're smart, you can be more sensitive. Too smart girls are not one who loves, no one who loves, no one who loves. 太懂事的女孩是没有人疼，没有人爱。So again, this seems like really bad advice for people telling women to be selfish. That's a very big recipe for disaster. But you have to look at this in the context of kind of traditional Chinese society. As a woman, if you're really a smart woman, you're not naive. You really can see problems through. And this kind of traditional society you had one chance to marry it right. So I think you have to look at it from this. You only have one chance. So if you only have one chance as a woman and you're a smart woman, you're not gonna just accept circumstances. Let's say you're married to some like fuck up and you're aware, that's really painful for your life for the rest of your life. If you have one chance and you're a smart woman, then be selfish about it. Find some guy who can provide you a lot of resources or find some guy you truly know that you'll get something out of. I really think that's what he's saying. But on the other hand, even if that's what he's saying, what I fear being analyzed in this modern context is that this will encourage Chinese women watching this to be like, huh, ah, I should be more hypergamous. I should be monkey branching, right? Because there's no social norms or legal norms to stop someone from, okay, I'll be selfish once. Okay, it's been two years. Oh, I want to be more selfish again. Oh, let's marry up again. Let's screw over this guy, do that. The thing about smart, cunning women is that it's fun. It's fun to be around them. They're crazy, but it's fun to be around them. But the problem is you're just their temporary thing right now, right? Because they're smart. They got goals. They got other pursuits. So I was telling Sherry that I think Jin Yong secretly wished he had a woman like Zhao Ming or Zhou Zizhuo, but he wished that they also had that personality of Huang Zhong, if you remember from our previous analysis. The fantasy dream girl in Jin Yong's mind, probably a lot of Asian men's mind, she's smart, but she's also very supportive and won't just bail on you with her intelligence. She'll actually use her intelligence to help you get to where you were. Remember that video I did? Go from A to B. That smart woman will help you go from A to B quicker. Guy fantasy, man. We went to the movie theater to watch the movie. You spent 50 yuan for a ticket. After watching the movie, you watched the movie half, and you found it was a bad movie. You don't go. Many people don't go. Why? I spent 50 yuan for a ticket. I have to watch it. Actually, you don't go. 50 yuan doesn't get you anywhere. You shouldn't become your own decision. So this 50 is called waste. We have a relationship. When you spend so much money on this girl, it's hard to get rid of her. You spend so much money on 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 her
。那么同样道理，如果这女孩很作，你是不是得陪小去？是不是得花钱花时间陪她呀？你付出这么多，到最后，你说黄了。你心里肯定不甘心了，所以往往能作的女孩带来的沉默成本大，你就希望能够把她维持下去。And I've talked about this before. It's called the sunk cost bias. Basically, you remember all the things you've done. Other people also only remember all the things they've done. They don't necessarily remember all the things you've done for them. Big red pill in life. I think couples that really appreciate each other both have done a lot of things for each other. Friends too. That's the key. But If it's more one-sided, don't expect the other side to appreciate all the things that the person has done because they're not thinking that way. But the sunk cost bias is something very interesting, and it's something worth exploring because think about jobs, think about colleges. So I'm looking at more macro things than him talking about movie tickets or even relationships. Think about a person he stays out of job for ten years. Why? Probably by the second year, he's like, "Oh, I've been here for two years. Ah,、oh, just stick it out." Or colleges, or houses, even living in an area. Yeah, I've been here for so long. Yes,、yeah, it's, it's I've spent enough money, enough time, enough resources. That's your driving factor. That's your decision. Is I've already done so much. That shouldn't be right. Whether you decide what to do, you've already done it. Very funny human heuristic right here. I will say this though, Jin Yong is underestimating the intelligence of guys, and I think that is his bias right here. He's not understanding. Some guys can detect when a woman's being that word zuo, selfish, kind of drama queen esque. Some guys can detect when a woman's trying to make you jump through too many hoops. Man, men are smart. Okay, not all men are smart, but I think. The majority of men, by a certain age and maturity, enough good influence, they'll be able to set enough boundaries, and they'll see. Oh yeah,、um, isn't she just making me do things? So I kind of just remember all the things I've done. The thing about me is, the two characters in this novel, especially Zhao Ming. Zhao Ming, the first time I heard of Yi Tian Tu Long Ji, Dragon Saber, however you translate the book, she annoyed me. The first time I saw her, I was probably in high school. I was just really, really annoyed by her. I just like this girl scheming. Yes, she's probably the hottest one in the series, but she's scheming. She's annoying.、I、just want to smack her. Certain guys are like that. So, dual women might be able to attract a low-level type of guy. Maybe you call them very cucky, but really high-level people, either really smart guys or guys with a lot going on. Not mutually exclusive, but sometimes they are. They usually don't have the time. Or they just don't have the mental faculties to want to deal with this type of bullshit. So that's something to keep in mind, because I really don't think dual women get far. A classic example of a dual type of woman is probably someone like Wendy Den, the person who married and then divorced Rupert Murdoch. Her type is rare. It's rare, and that's why people are so interested in that story. I think normal. People who are on the top rungs of society, who an intelligent woman might want to access, he himself wants a supportive, loving wife, right? He doesn't want a drama queen, selfish wife. So that's something to keep in mind. So in this book, you see, Jin Yong's novel is also like this. Not smart women, you see, Zhou Zhuo, um, he often says Zhang Yiji, but Zhang Yiji can't remember. Zhao Min often brings Zhang Yiji into trouble. Yes, Zhang Yiji is very good. 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 最后什么两害相权取其轻，张木基就想啊，我离开这个离开那个，对谁伤害大？他这么算账，他发现离开小赵可能这个机会成本最高，就伤害的最小。为啥呢？小赵回到波斯总坛了，当上圣女了，当教主了，而且跟他妈紫山龙王戴起斯一块回去，他怎么了？所以往往这时候男的觉得你离了我也行，如果让男人觉得这女的离了他就活不了，你看着。所以，我们这不是告诉女孩学坏，说你要用各种办法把男的给框住，不是那意思。我只是说，什么事情上，你付出的努力越大，你越不愿意撒手。哎，所以这个会作的女孩有人疼。大家，我再说一遍，金庸这番话，你记住：女孩最好不要太聪明，如果聪明，就任性一点。太懂事的女孩不容易招人疼、招人爱。这话是含着眼泪的话。是的。你细琢磨，人世间哪有那么多公平啊 ？And here's another thing I want to mention. Because Jin Yong, and it could be Lao Liang, I don't know, but hear me out here. The causality might actually not be correct. So the way Lao Liang's analyzing Jin Yong's interpretation of his novel, Zhang Wuji ultimately chose Zhao Ming because he sunk the most cost into her, dealing with her conniving bullshit, and I'm sure she kind of did like him too. 
but it's just so much drama between them that ultimately he's like, man, I've spent so much energy and effort on you and, you know, I kind of can't live without you. That's the causality, right? It's the sunk cost causality. I briefly mentioned this earlier, but Zhao Ming, from all accounts, was the most attractive one out of them. You see, that's what... Lao Liang's not pulling in from earlier. He's talking about the tits and ass and all that. What's a woman's number one asset in her youth? It's her fertility. So being the most attractive one, wouldn't that cause Zhang Wuzi, our main character, to want to devote a little bit more time and resources into her? You see, so I'm saying the causality is the other way. It's not that Zhang Wuzi, because he spent so much time dealing with her, ultimately wants her more. It's that because she's maybe way more attractive than all the other women in his life. She's top prize, so to speak. You see, so that's a nuance that Lao Liang is not indicating here because he wants to sell his sunk cost theory. But just keep that in mind, man, because if I were to rank all the women, Zhao Ming's up here. She's the top in attractiveness. Then it's Zhou Ziruo. And then it's probably um, Xiao Zhao, the, the Persian girl. And then it's... The fourth girl, I forgot. That girl has a very brief romance with Zhang Wuzi. She gets killed, so she's not as important as the other three. But if you look at how Zhang Wuzi approaches the three of them, okay, we're going to take out the fourth one because she dies in the middle of the novel. Zhang Wuzi ultimately ends up with Zhao Ming, and he almost ends up with Zhou Zhizhuo. He, I believe, even was about to marry her or something, or maybe did marry her, and then Xiao Zhao kind of eventually left her. He treats them the way you would expect based on their attractiveness. He's the most devoted to Zhao Ming, loves her the most, or in the end decides he loves her the most. She's the most attractive. Zhou Zhuo, he spends the second amount of sunk cost on. She's the second most attractive, and Xiao Zhao's the third. So that's something to keep in mind. It's a little bit more complicated than just how much you sink costs into people. So for everyone watching, whether in relationships or something, don't purposely try to make someone just spend a lot of time and resources on you, they'll get annoyed, especially if they have an ounce of intelligence. There's a lot of other things. So looks, et cetera, status, et cetera, that's something I'm pulling into here. But ultimately, just remember, Zhao Ming is the most attractive, and Zhang Wuji spends the most time dealing with her. So it's hard to distinguish the causality of what causes what chemical reactions to happen in Zhang Wuji's brain. So, 没有的，我会给你加更多。就是对于人来说，有的时候越缺的东西，人越反而给你拿走；越不缺的东西，越往上加。所以金庸写情为什么写的透彻，憨快淋漓，就是金庸对人情的掌握是妙到好点。I included this moment because I just want to emphasize nobody's perfect. People get their information wrong. When Lao Liang's not talking about Chinese culture and history, he's not an expert, right? He's quoting Matthew thirteen twelve, and he gets it completely wrong because he's not reading it. Within the context of what's going on. Matthew 13, 12. The purpose of the parables. Then the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. The context is, he's talking about faith and belief in the Bible and the good word. So he's saying, the more you believe, the more you follow God, the more you'll be given. The more other people don't listen, etc., the more will be taken away from them. That's what it's saying. Lao Liang's not reading it within the context of this discussion. I'm reading it from the ESV. We can go to something else, you know. ESV, a lot of these Bibles, some of them are more directly what was written. Sometimes the words, etc., the context, it gets lost. So sometimes you want to read a more paraphrased version. So to look at a more paraphrased version, we probably look at NIV or something like that. So let's go. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Yeah. It's about the knowledge from God and Jesus, etc. It's not about objectively 
getting less, you're getting more. So you have to look at it in the context. Let's look. Like if you look at the New Living Translation, his disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? He replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. So this is more of an exclusivity thing. Interesting. So that's, see, you get the different nuances between the versions. You get different kind of implications. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Okay, so this is another way of saying following the Bible, following the word, following the way of Christ and God, etc. Follow this way, you'll get more and more. If you don't follow this way, even if you think or try to understand the way, you're going to get less and less. Has nothing to do with the topic at hand. And that's why I had to call this out. It's a false analogy, false equivalence. And I'm not saying this to say Lao Liang's not qualified to talk about Chinese history culture. It's just, you have to remember, experts have a specialization. So make sure if they're talking outside their specialization, examine to make sure they're not talking out of their ass. Yoshushindo,有人了。就你才发现我们生活这世界并不美好。有时候甚至很残酷。但是残酷就是人生。你如何锻炼自己能够面对残酷,就说明你成熟了。所以还是那句话嘛。我喜欢这样的女人。她受
I look forward to your thoughts. Talk to you soon.